Hi, we're not on the ranch today, we're in the field. Now recently we did a presentation comparing AR platforms with 20, 16, and 10 and a half inch barrels. And that led to so many questions and so much commentary that it created the need for a part two, so here we are. Now, one of the things we did in part one was a meat target demonstration where I shot the meat target from a distance of 50 yards with an AR platform with a 20 inch barrel loaded with 5.56 NATO 55 grains full metal jacket spare point ammunition, then shot another meat target at 50 yards with the same ammunition with a 10 and a half inch barrel. And with the significantly lower velocity we were getting out of the shorter barrel, it gave us what appeared to be less effect on the meat target. And that led to a lot of questions about how much difference does velocity really make when shooting full metal jacket ammunition? And requests for a demonstration not just at 50 yards, but perhaps 100 and 200 yards. And we had a lot of questions about how would different types of ammunition, such as soft points and hollow points, perform in the long compared to the short barrel. And at different distances, like 100 and 200 yards. And so we're going to try to demonstrate some of that today. But as far as the question as to how much difference does velocity really make when you're using full metal jacket ammunition, let me see if I can demonstrate that. So at five yards, I have a couple of water jugs set up and I have two different types of ammunition. Both are Winchester white box. One is 38 Special, the other is 38 Super Auto Plus P. The projectile diameter on the 38 Special is 357, on the 38 Super, 355. Not enough difference to talk about. Also, both of these ammunitions are loaded with 130 grain full metal jacket flat nose. Now, a few minutes ago, I chronographed both of these. And in my Smith & Wesson Model 36, the 38 Special chronographed at 743 feet per second. In my Colt Government Model Caliber 38 Super Auto, it chronographed at 1,243 feet per second, a difference of 500 feet per second. So all other factors being equal except a significant difference in velocity, let's see how they perform on the jugs. Let's take a close up look at these water jugs. So with a 38 special, we have a 35 caliber hole in one side and a 35 caliber hole out the other side. With the 38 super, we see that it split the back of the jug quite a bit. So all other factors being equal, I'd have to say that velocity makes a significant difference. So I've got the chronograph set up at seven yards and we'll start with the 20 inch barrel and we'll start with Remington green and yellow box, 223 Remington, 55 grain pointed soft point. Thirty-two, thirty-six. Thirty-two, twenty-six. Thirty-one, fifty. Thirty-one, seventy-nine. Thirty-one, eighty-six. And thirty-one, eighty-seven. Now let's see how that compares when we shoot that ammo out of the shorter barrel. And now we'll try our Remington 55 grain pointed soft point in our 10 and a half inch barrel. 2742. 2851. 2647. 2865. 2746 and 2726. Now let's go crunch the numbers. So with our Remington with the 55 grain pointed soft point, out of the 20 inch barrel, we got a velocity of 3194. Out of the 10 and a half inch barrel, that's 2762. That's a loss of 432 feet per second. That seems significant. Let's try another type of ammo. And now we'll try our Nosler Armageddon ammunition, which is 223 Remington with a 62 grain FBHP projectile a jacket at hollow point. And again, we'll start with a 20 inch barrel. 27, 26. 28, 16. 27, 88. 27, 31. and 2710. Now let's try that in the short barrel. And now the nozzle ammunition in the 10 and a half inch barrel. 
2208. 2177. 2220. 2221. 2403. Now let's go crunch those numbers. Now our Nosler Armageddon ammunition has a 62 grain projectile so we would expect lower velocities than what we had with the 55 grain and that's just what we got. With the 20 inch barrel we got a mean of 2754 and in the 10 and a half inch barrel 2206. Now an interesting thing there when shooting with the 10 and a half inch barrel, all of the velocities were fairly close to 2200 feet per second, except the last shot was over 2400. That was so far outside the scope of what the others had been that I just took that one out of the computation of the mean. So with 2206, that gives us a loss of 548 feet per second when we go to the shorter barrel. And again, that seems like a significant loss. Now let's try another type of ammo. Now let's try Federal American Eagle 223 Remington 50 grain jacket at hollow point. And again, we'll start with a 20 inch barrel. 3316. 3197. 3252 and 3238. Now let's try that in the short barrel. And now the Federal American Eagle 50 grain in the 10 and a half inch barrel. 2688. 2602. 2751, 2670, 2762, 2762, and 2762. Let's go crunch those numbers. Our American Eagle ammunition has a 50 grain jacket at hollow point, and with a slightly lighter projectile we would expect higher velocities, and that's what we got. With the 20 inch barrel we got a mean of 3277, and with the 10 and a half inch barrel 2694. Now in shooting the shorter barrel you may have noticed that the last two shots had the same reading. That's indicative that the second one may have been a malfunction, so I threw that one out in computing the mean. But with 2694 that gives us a net loss of 583 feet per second. Okay, that's a lot less. Now let's try another type of ammo. Now let's try this Hornady Match 223 Remington 75 grain Boattail hollow point. And again, we'll start with the 20 inch barrel. 2676. 2708. 2674. 2662 and 2670. Let's try that in a short barrel. And now the Hornady match in the 10 and a half inch barrel. 2389. 2348 2279 our Hornady match ammunition has a 75 grain boat tail hollow point, and with a projectile that heavy we would expect lower velocities. And with our 20 inch barrel we got a velocity of 2678. 
with a 10 and a half inch barrel 2288, a loss of 390 feet per second, which is still a significant amount. Let's try one more type of ammo. Okay, one more type of ammunition. This is Remington Premier Match 223 Remington 77 grain boat tail hollow point. And again, we'll start with a 20 inch barrel. Twenty-seven thirty-four. Twenty-six eighty-nine. Twenty-six fifty. Twenty-six sixty-eight. Twenty-seven oh five. and 28.34. Now let's try this ammo in the short barrel. And now the premier match in the 10 and a half inch barrel. 22 22.19. 22.26. 2166 2280 and 2318 let's go crunch the numbers our Remington match ammunition has a 77 grain boat tail hollow point, so only two grains heavier than the Hornady, so we would expect fairly similar velocities, and that's what we got. With a 20 inch barrel, a velocity of 2713, with a 10 and a half inch barrel, 2240, a net loss of 473 feet per second. So fairly similar results between the Remington and the Hornady with the 77 and 75 grain projectiles. Now, one thing I wanna to add to all of this is that today we did not use the 16 inch barreled rifle we saw in part one that when you go from the 20 to the 16 inch barrel, you do lose velocity, but not very much. The real difference is when you go from the 20 to the 10 and a half inch barrel, a lot of velocity is lost. With these ammunitions, anywhere from 390 to 583 feet per second. And as I've said several times, those seem like very significant numbers. But really, these are just numbers on a page. How will these velocity differences translate into effectiveness on the target? Let's see if we can put that to the test. As we saw in part one and the demonstration with the 38 handguns a few minutes ago, when shooting full metal jacket projectiles, velocity does make some difference. But where velocity really comes into play is when you're using expanding projectiles, hollow points, soft points, ballistic tips, FTX projectiles. All of those are, to some degree, velocity based. The faster you propel a hollow point, the more expansion you'll get up to a point. If you propel those expanding type projectiles too slowly, they'll drop below expansion threshold and you'll get very little to no expansion. And where expansion threshold is depends on what type of ammunition you're using. And whether or not you're above or below expansion threshold becomes a big concern when using the short barreled AR platform, seeing how much velocity we're losing, and especially when you're shooting significant distances. So will we get satisfactory performance with expanding projectiles out of the short barrel? To test that, we're going to use the meat target. Now, for those who haven't seen it before, the meat target is leather couch skin followed by pork steak pectorals, pork ribs, bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. And I'm going to shoot this from a distance of 200 yards. And I'm going to start with a 20 inch barreled rifle, which is loaded with the Remington 55 grain pointed soft point. And we'll see what kind of damage we do and what kind of expansion we get. Then we'll repeat that with the short barreled platform and see how the results compare. Well, we had some success. Where the projectiles hit the ribs on the front of the target, shattered them. Did a lot of damage to our orange lung tissue, but some of the projectiles missed the ribs on the back of the target, and some of them were not stopped by the high-tech fleece bullet stop. I only recovered two projectiles that actually penetrated in the way we wanted them to. But I think they'll give us the data we need to see. Let's take a close-up look at them. 
And here's our two projectiles. We see that one lost its jacket, but there's a great deal of expansion with both of them. So now we have a new meat target set up and have my short barreled platform loaded with the same Remington ammunition. And I'll shoot this from 200 yards and let's see what happens. So with a short barreled platform and a muzzle velocity that's over 400 feet per second less, what we see when shooting at 200 yards is the ribs on the front of the target still have extensive damage to them. We see a lot of damage to what this time is grapefruit lung tissue. And again, we managed to recover two of the projectiles. Let's take a close up look at them. And here's our two projectiles. And I suppose you could argue that they do have less expansion, but not much less. And it's certainly sufficient expansion. Now I've got a new meat target set up, and I'll shoot this from 200 yards with a 20-inch barrel platform, which is loaded with our Remington match ammunition and its 77-grain boat tail hollow point. Let's see what kind of results we get from this. Now these 77 grain projectiles are hollow points, but the hollow point is very small and that's made to give you some penetration before they start expanding. We can see that in the ribs on the front of the target that just have 556 five, holes in them compared to the ribs on the back of the target. And between those ribs is a whole lot of orange puree. These rounds look very effective. Now let's take a close up look at them. And these are the bits and pieces of the projectiles that I was able to recover. And now we have a new meat target set up, and I'll shoot this from 200 yards with the 10 and a half inch barrel platform, which is also loaded with the Remington 77 grain. So with the 77 grain projectiles in the 10 and a half inch barrel, we see the ribs on the front of the target, just five, five, six holes. We see a lot of damage to our orange lung tissue, but in my subjective view, it looks like not nearly as much as we had with the 20 inch barrel. And the ribs on the back of the target, now these projectiles are expanding, they're tumbling. We see a lot more damage to the ribs on the back than we had on the front. However, with the 10 and a half inch barrel, we're seeing a lot less damage than we saw with a 20 inch barrel. So shooting 200 yards with a short barreled platform, I would call this performance adequate, but it's definitely less than what we got with a 20 inch barrel. And here's what's left of the projectiles I was able to recover. So the takeaways from all of this, we see that velocity does matter, and we see when going from the long to the short barrel, we are losing significant amounts of velocity. But in terms of the performance of expanding projectiles, at least at distances of 200 yards and less, it appears those projectiles are still expanding and they are delivering adequate performance. So are we losing some performance? Yes. Are we losing enough to matter? You be the judge. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the long-barreled versus short-barreled AR platform video, part two.